abuse of power. That's the most upsetting thing to me is people who abuse their positions. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at 10 of the darkest secrets in Hollywood. Studio says you're escorting Carlotta Valdez to your premiere tonight. How come? I don't know her. Studio's arranging it. They're changing your image. For this list, we're pulling back the curtain on some of Hollywood's shadiest backdoor deals and darkest hidden in plain sight tales of bad behavior. Did any of these secrets shock you? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Presence of Organized Crime There is a wealth of weird and wild stories behind the glitz and glamour of old-school Hollywood. Over the years, rumors have circulated about the connections between some A-listers and organized crime. Tonight, we're celebrating the birth of a new city built right here by the ruins of Los Angeles. The Trocadero, aka The Troc, was a famous spot on the Sunset Strip. Celebrities, along with studio heads, would rub elbows with notorious gangsters like Mickey Cohen. It's progress. I in progress. And the mob's presence in Hollywood stuck around after the Golden Age, with reported shady ties to film productions right into the 1970s. For example, films like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre were released by Bryanston Pictures, a company linked to a mafia crime family. <laughs> Number 9. Diversity Issues in an older, even less diverse Hollywood, it wasn't uncommon for a white actor to portray an Asian, black, or indigenous character. I, I think as a movie goer, you look and you go, oh my god, that's, that's Marlon Brando with his eyes slanted and pulled. I mean, that's just kind of... So to, to me, it defeated the purpose. You want to get a big star to get attention, but then you know what the big star looks like, and he looks kind of this orientalish kind of thing and it doesn't quite look right. This was the old school practice of excluding minorities from major leading roles, and even smaller roles for that matter. But in 2015, hashtag Oscars so white shed light on the decades long lack of diversity in Hollywood. This year's awards will be the whitest Oscars since 1998. Since then, some major Hollywood productions have made it a priority to be more inclusive and diverse in their casting. While the level of quality for minority roles has shifted over the years, offering a plethora of better parts with more meaningful dialogue, Hollywood still has far to go. Right now it's really dope and cool and on trend yes. to work with women and underrepresented groups, but I think the, the moment of maturity in the industry is when it is just the norm. Yeah, you for know, sure. When, when you no longer need to ask that question. Yeah. Number eight, adult origins. Fun fact, there are more connections between mainstream Hollywood and the adult industry than you might think. I make it. Adults films, exotic pictures. Oh, I know who you are. I read about you in a magazine. Some major players, such as Sylvester Stallone, Wes Craven, and Men in Black director Barry Sonnenfeld, cut their teeth in the genre. What do you think? Very interesting. She got a real queen of the undead thing on the body. Great body. It was also commonplace for many behind the camera to work interchangeably between the two worlds, sometimes using pseudonyms. For example, cinematographer Joao Fernandez used names like Harry Flex for his adult film work, but he went under his real name for mainstream movies like Children of the Corn, Invasion USA, and Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter. <laughs> Number seven, the toll of being a child star. It can take a lifetime for some actors to achieve international notoriety and respect, but for others, success finds them at an early age. But are they emotionally equipped to handle all that comes with being a child star? Stardom is really hard on child actors. And when you throw in a horrible stage mother like uh, Peggy Roberts, <laughs> poor little Dickie had no chance. Most would say no. There are too many tragic cautionary tales about how early fame can be a pitfall for child stars without a strong support system. The temptation of drug use and the presence of malevolent adults can lurk around every corner. But along with the fame, Feldman says he learned firsthand about Hollywood's big secret, one he's tried to tell for years without naming names. Growing up in front of the camera can make the already difficult period of puberty that much more challenging. Thankfully, there are examples like Drew Barrymore who have made it out the other end. I would look around and see the behaviors of the people that I wanted to be like one day, and they were always the kind, humble, gracious, hardworking, 
you know, lovely examples. But sadly, not everyone has been so lucky. Number six, not paying writers enough. It seems so simple, pay the writer. We're paraphrasing sci-fi legend Harlan Ellison, who commented on the issue in the 2008 documentary, Dreams with Sharp Teeth. Are they any less the media whore than I? I think not, they just haven't, nobody's offered to buy their soul. Uh, I sell my soul, but at the highest rates, the highest rates. I don't take a piss without getting paid for it. He laments the plight of writers whose work is devalued and who have to scratch, claw, and scream to get paid what their work is worth by the Hollywood system. It's been so bad in the past that Hollywood screenwriters have gone on strike. We could see an immediate dramatic impact on television. You'll see lots of shows go into reruns right away, and in the long term you could see delays and shorter episode orders. Other examples of dissatisfaction include the Passion of the Christ screenwriter Benedict Fitzgerald suing director Mel Gibson and his production company, claiming fraud, breach of contract, and unjust enrichment. But it isn't just writers. There continues to be a significant wage gap between male and female actors for the same work. Because we need to talk about it. On average, women are paid 21% less than men. We can ask for the same exact thing as a, that, that men do. Number five, treatment of animals. Just like humans, animal actors are deserving of protection and safety while on set. Unfortunately, it hasn't always been this way in Hollywood. There have been animal abuse controversies as recently as 2017, with allegations against the production of A Dog's Purpose, though it was later reported that the video in question was edited. What was your experience with the animals on the set? My experience is that the animals were treated great. There was no animal abuse on the side. Regardless, the legacy of mistreatment tragically goes back much farther. Productions like 1925's Ben-Hur and many old-school westerns featured horrifying horse falls. <laughs> and the horror classic Friday the 13th actually killed a snake on camera. It's a controversial history of very real sacrifice, all for the sake of cinema. Kill it! You heard the lady. I can't get it till it comes out. Well, call him! How do you call a snake? Number four, the pressure for the perfect weight. The movie industry is a visual medium, and that presents an intense set of challenges for everyone who chooses to live a life in front of the camera. We can't legally ask you to do that. We didn't say lose no. weight. I might say tighten. Tight. A little tighter. Just like toned and smaller. Unfortunately, the pressure of appearance can be all consuming especially for those just entering the business seeking to make their mark. This pressure is unfairly slanted at female actors who have to contend with societal standards of beauty. I didn't think anything was wrong with my body until I was in an industry that rewards and praises people for having a smaller waist than I will ever have. There are also unrealistic expectations placed upon them by casting directors, agents, and producers. As a result, many performers have struggled with eating disorders, damaging their health and bodies in order to look good for a movie or on the red carpet. I fluctuate a lot with my weight, and I remember this night specifically, I didn't feel good about my body. So what was really amazing was that I actually got a chance to work on the dress that fit my body. It's a discussion that's all too often swept under the rug. Number three, substances on set. The movie-making process is a collaborative process, requiring the collective effort of so many people to bring it all together. Get out of here, Dewey. What are y'all doing in here? We're smoking reefer, and you don't want no part of this shit. And oftentimes, the jobs of all these people may hinge upon the performance or name recognition of a single celebrity. That's a lot of pressure for even the healthiest person, but what about for someone struggling with substance issues? Just come on, Alvin. Come on. Come here. <laughs> Do your body a favor. Try it. Come yeah, on. Come on. Yeah, come sure on. Like Hollywood has been guilty of feeding the addictions of some of its brightest stars, including comedy legend John Belushi. His 1980 hit, The Blues Brothers, reportedly had the price of cocaine built into its budget. <laughs> It's the sort of truth, stranger than fiction tale that could only be rumored in Hollywood. Number two, fixers. 
It may seem like an impossible task in today's hyper-connected world, but there was once a time when Hollywood stars were able to keep their secrets, well, secret. Who have I named names? If I just if I tell the truth. Uh, I don't think you'll do that. Mr. Whitlock? And if they couldn't? Well, that was where a fixer would come in. The life of Hollywood fixer Eddie Mannix served as partial inspiration for the 2016 Coen Brothers film Hail Caesar. Mannix would do just about anything to protect his clients' public reputations. But the story of Eddie Mannix Who do we call first? will never end. New York first. Time to check in with Mr. Skank. For his is a tale written in light everlasting. His role at MGM involved everything from consorting with organized crime, destroying evidence, and hiding or otherwise fixing unplanned pregnancies. Today, some celebrities like Mark Wahlberg may seek pardoning for their dark or violent pasts. I was basically a follower instead of a leader, and I needed to, to change my ways and going back into the community and still living in that neighborhood and having to go to the train station every day and pass those guys was a tough thing to do, but I was committed to turning my life around. But in old Hollywood, scandals just needed to disappear. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Casting Couch Harvey Weinstein's reprehensible crimes were exposed, but the actual history of the casting couch predates the disgraced former Miramax founder by many, many years. That little bitch didn't waste any time, did he? And today's your lucky day. We're holding auditions. Really? How far back exactly? So far back that one of the first stag films from 1924 uses it as a plot device. The late 2010s gave rise to the Me Too movement. It's just it's just one of the worst crimes, I think, to, to abuse your influence and power in a negative way. And it's, it's exciting to think of our culture changing and it's high time. And Me Too encouraged victims, overwhelmingly but not exclusively female, to speak out against the twisted practices of too many in the industry exploiting those searching for an opportunity. And it turned out that the director who had um, who went on to make the film and who I was auditioning for used to show that video late at night to interested parties at his house. And although the casting couch euphemism is abhorrent and the actual act is illegal, its legacy in the Hollywood system might never truly go away. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.